We're going to install Virtual Smart Zone version 5.1 on AWS. Now the length of this video is pretty long, so I'm going to go ahead and skip over the introduction slides, but I am including those in the description box down below. Because this video is pretty long, I encourage you to use the pause button, rewind, fast forward where needed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cover the pre-work that goes on within AWS first. We're going to get the instance ready for the virtual machine, and then we'll get the VSC install completed. Okay, we've logged into the CLI, and as you can see here, we are running Ubuntu. There's a little bit of prep work we have to do, so there's some commands we're going to run. We'll run through those pretty quick, and then we'll get to the point where we can actually build the VM and get SmartZone installed. All right, the first step, we're going to use a curl command, and we're just going to go out and grab the pip binary files that we can install here shortly. Okay, the next step, we need to run a system update, basically. So we're going to run sudo apt update to update the base packages that we've installed with Ubuntu already. This is a best practice. It's smart to do before an install, especially on a fresh installation like this. So we'll go ahead and execute that. Next, we've got to install Python pip. So we're going to use sudo apt install Python pip, and we'll go ahead and execute that and confirm, and it'll start to install. Okay, the next thing we need, we need the AWS CLI program, so we're going to download and install that as well. Okay, now that the AWS CLI is installed, I'm going to just show you an example. You can run AWS help, and it will give you a help menu. All right, housekeeping I think is over with, so we can start with the fun part. So we're gonna do an AWS configure, and we're gonna enter the access key ID that was provided to us by AWS. Now, this should be contained on your side. You should have that once you've paid for the service. After that, we're gonna go ahead and add the secret access key ID, and then we'll enter a region, and we'll go ahead and enter a format. We're gonna use JSON format. Now, I do apologize, I've blurred these keys just for security purposes, but this shows you when you need to input those in the process. Okay, so just a quick check. I'm going to do a print working directory. I see them in my home directory. So now what I need to do is I need to create the trustpolicy.json file. Again, remember these JSON files and the contents that need to go in them are in the getting started guide. So once I've created it, I'm going to VI that file to create it or put the information in there. It's already in my clipboard. So I go ahead and paste it in and then we'll write quit and exit. Now we're going to create a role with the name of VM import, and then we're going to have it assume the behavior from the trustpolicy.json script we just created. Now the catch with this is once we execute it, it's going to give us an error and tell us that a role with that name already exists. I created a test VM before the recording to make sure that everything worked correctly. That's why it's spitting this error. It will not do that to you. Okay, next thing, we need to create a policy, and a policy in Amazon Web Services is essentially, it's just an object that points to a resource. So this is going to point to our VSZ installation demo, or the VSZ install files. So we'll go ahead and do that. Now, keep in mind this document that we're going to create, the JSON document, the contents of it are contained in the Getting Started Guide, but we do need to modify some of it. Okay, I'm doing this a little backwards, but for the demonstration, I think it helps make more sense. So we're going to create the role policy.json file, and then we're going to go ahead and modify it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste the contents that are found in the Getting Started Guide in there. Once I do that, we're going to have to go create this bucket in the GUI for Amazon Web Services. Then we'll come back and modify this file to point to the bucket that we've created, and that'll get us going from there. All right, we're in the GUI, so we're going to go down to where it says Storage, and then we're going to click on S. Now within this screen, we're going to create a new bucket. So we're going to click on create, and then we're going to give it a name. So we're going to name this guy VSZ install. We'll leave the region default as it is, and then we'll go ahead and click on next. Now I'm not going to modify any of the default values in these screens. You may have different requirements. If you do, that's perfectly fine. We'll click next again. Again, we're going to leave it default. We'll click next one more time, and then we're going to go ahead and click on create bucket, and this is going to give us the bucket that we need. Now we'll go back into our JSON file and reference this bucket that we just created. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to VI the role policy.json file that we created, and we're going to modify it. Now, full disclosure, I cheated, and I went ahead and modified the file the way we need it. So I just want you to note that we have new resource information in here. It no longer says disk image bucket, etc. So under resource, we can see that we're calling VSZ install. And then under resource down below a little bit further, we can see that we're referencing VSZ install as well. So we'll right quit this file and go from there. All right, let's attach this policy to the service role. So we're going to use the AWS IAM put role policy command. 
the role name is VM import, the policy name is VM import, and we're going to reference the role policy.json file we just created. So once we execute that, we're ready to go. We can jump in the GUI and finish this up. All right, back in the GUI, we're on the screen we left off on. So we're going to go down to our VSZ install bucket that we created, and we're going to open that. Now we need to upload the OVA file. We've already downloaded it prior to this. So we'll go over and we'll click on Add Files. And then we'll go ahead and add the file that we downloaded. Now what we need to do after this is we're going to go ahead and click on Next now that we can verify the file name. And from here, we just need to validate that the permissions are correct. Looks great. So we're going to click on Upload. And once this is done, we'll continue. Upload took around six minutes in total, depends on your internet connection. So we're going to go back to the CLI and we need to create an import.json file. What we're going to do is we're going to take the contents of what should be in that file from the getting started guide, paste them in there. So we'll do a vi import.json and go ahead and open that and then just paste it in. Now note that we have a description, S3 bucket and S3 key. Those came out of the, out of the guide. We need to modify those. So as you can see here, I've changed the description. I've referenced the bucket that we created and I've also referenced the OVA file that we just uploaded. Let's run the AWS EC2 import image command and it's going to pull that import.json file but we get an error. It's telling us the service role VM import does not exist or does not have permissions for the service to continue. So to verify this we're going to go into the GUI and under security, identity, and compliance we'll go to IAM. Now, within IAM, we need to navigate to roles. We're really looking for two things. One, we want to make sure the role is there, and two, we want to make sure if it is there, it has permissions. So we'll go ahead and scroll down here, and at the bottom, there it is, VM imports. Let's open that, and then we're going to click on Show 12 More. We need to see the full list. Okay, so there's VM imports. So we're going to go ahead and expand that. And once we expand it, we can see that in S3, we have an access level that's limited. It's either list or read. So we need to resolve that. So we're going to go ahead and click on S3, and then we're going to edit the policy. Now here, we're going to expand S3, and we're going to go to Actions. And under Actions, we're just going to give it all S3 actions. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to Resources. And in Resources, we want to be specific. So for Bucket and Object, we're going to give it any. Perfect. Let's review the policy and see how it looks. Great. We have full access. So we'll go ahead and click on Save Changes and go from there. All right. So back in the CLI, we run the AWS EC2 import command again, and it goes ahead and runs successfully now that we fixed the permissions. That, that's great. And we also see a status message here of pending. Now, one thing we can do is if we want to check the status of this periodically, we can run an AWS EC2 describe import image tasks command, and we just have to use the import task ID specifically to return status of what's going on with it. So we can run this periodically. We'll see what's happening. Once it's done, then we can move into the GUI and finalize the setup. You can do this on your end as well, but I ran this import task command a couple of times throughout this process. The whole thing took about 15 minutes, but we can see that it went from converting into updating, updating into booting, and then booting into booted, and then it was preparing the AMI, and finally it was completed. We're gonna go back to the main screen, and we're gonna go back to EC2, and then we're gonna go to AMI. So something I wanna show you here is the AMI name. So we'll expand this out. What we need to do is we need to correlate the AMI name to the VM that we imported. Remember the ID that it gave us that we had to check the status on? Well, we need to verify that. So as you see here, this is what was given to us. That's great. Now what we can do is we're just going to rename this AMI, and we're going to give it our VSZ install name so that we know it's ours. It's just a correlation thing. It's a good practice. It'll help us keep things straight within the GUI. In the navigation pane on the left, we've got a network and security and then clicked on security groups. All right, we need a security group. So we're gonna go ahead and create that. I'm gonna add the rule, but let's name it real quick. We're just gonna call it VSZ install firewall and we'll give it a description. Now we're gonna do this wide open. So we're gonna allow all traffic from any source. You most likely don't wanna do this on your end. I don't recommend it, but for the demonstration purposes, we're just gonna do that just to get connectivity and make sure that we don't have any snags. So once we've got that built, we're going to go ahead and verify it real quick, take a look, and then we'll just hit create. Let's build this VM and launch it. So we're going to go ahead and highlight it, and we're going to click on launch. 
Now what we're going to do is basically going to configure the hardware settings for it and start it. So now we need to select the virtual CPUs and memory. They're predefined, so we're going to go ahead and use the four virtual CPUs, the 16 gigs of memory, and then we'll click on next. You might not necessarily need to follow this. I'm not going to change anything in the instance details page. There's a lot of options here. You might need things for your environment. So we're going to go ahead and click on add storage. Good. Storage page looks great. We've got a 100 gigabyte hard drive. That's exactly what we need. So next we're going to click on add tags. Tags can be utilized to name your resources. We don't need them. We'll click next. Let's select an existing security group and let's go down and grab the VSZ install firewall security group that we created earlier. And then we'll click on review and launch. Well, the review screen is going to tell us that our instances security is pretty poor. We opened it to the world. Again, don't do that. You need to be more specific and use your source IP addresses. Now it's going to ask us for an existing key pair. We don't actually have one and we don't really need one for this demonstration. So we're going to proceed without a key pair. However, it does allow you to connect to virtual smart zones securely, so it's definitely something worth looking into and seeing if it's viable for your environment. Go to view instances. I want to show you this real quick. We see that the VM we created is pending and that it's also initializing. Further, we can verify the public IP address. Again, sorry I blurred it, but we'll speed this up. You'll see that it's now running and we'll jump into the CLI. CLI time, we run setup. Now for this installation, we're going to select an essentials profile and then just confirm that we can't change it once we've selected that. Now we're going to go ahead and select IPv4 only and we're going to use DHCP. AWS is going to give us some IP addresses for the installation and those will work perfectly fine. Once we're done with that, we're going to add some DNS servers. We're just going to use some publicly available servers from Google. We'll configure those and now we're going to confirm these settings. Now once the settings are confirmed and applied, it'll go ahead and restart the network service and come back and just ensure that we want to apply those. Yes, and now we're off to the GUI. Great, we're in the GUI, but keep in mind we had to connect to the external or the public IP address that AWS provided us. Sadly, I have to blur it for security reasons, but just keep a note that that's the IP address that you'll need to use to connect to SmartZone. All right, we're creating a new cluster and we've named it VSZ51. Now I'm going to give it a description. Once I do that, I'm going to click on next and we'll see an error message pop up saying this is requiring a control NAT IP. So we need to go ahead and configure that. Now what this is, is remember the DHCP addresses that were given to the controller within Amazon Web Services were private. We were also given a public IP address. So we're gonna put that public IP in there and then click on next. So we're gonna set some passwords. We're gonna change the admin and the enable password. And then once we've got those in there and confirmed, we'll click on next. Now we're going to check the confirmation screen, make sure everything looks good. If we need to go back and change anything here, we can, or we can restore from a config backup, but we're happy with it. So we're going to go ahead and click on finish. Now this part is going to take 20 to 30 minutes. It's a good time to get up and stretch your legs, get something to drink, or get some of your other tasks done. When you come back, we should be all set and ready to configure the controller. Well, our controller's finished configuring. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on this hyperlink that's gonna redirect us to the GUI. When we do that, we're gonna go ahead and log in. And now we're gonna be met with a couple things. One, it's gonna show us that the cluster is offline or out of service, not all the services are up. This is normal, it's expected behavior in a new smart zone install. This will clear on its own. However, if we lose some patience and we wanna check it periodically, you can just refresh the page. Once it's done, as you can see here, here from a refresh, it's up, online, green, and ready to go. Check the description box below for great resources located on the RUCA support portal. There you can find KB articles, documentation, videos, and more. Thanks for watching.